If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation and dark spots, then you might be wondering what's the most effective way to get rid of them. You also might be questioning what products should I use? Will these products work for my skin? How should I layer them and use them in my skincare routine? Then stick around because I'm about to give you all the tips, spill all the tea on how to modify your current routine to treat your dark spots for your specific skin type. So if you're new here, my name is Christina. I have my doctorate in nursing, which helps me analyze and synthesize all the research to provide you skincare tips, routines, and products that actually work. On this channel, we talk about all things skincare as well as Korean skincare so if you haven't subscribed you need to right now that way we can become skincare besties. Make sure you download my hyperpigmentation guide that provides you with all the information the tips from today's video. I'll include a link in the description as well as the products that I mentioned today. If you haven't already then watch my video on how to fade your hyperpigmentation because you'll learn what causes it, the best ingredients to treat it based on the research, and it also helps you understand the why behind my recommendations today. Since I already covered all that information in my previous video I'm just going to jump right into the skincare routine. First start off by identifying your skin type. Is it dry? Is it oily? Or is it combo? To help you out, here are all the different skin types. If you have oily skin, you might be more prone to breakouts or clogged pores, or your skin tends to look a little bit shiny and have this like oily, greasy feeling. Or you might be on the opposite side of the spectrum where your skin looks dry, dull. It's like a cactus that's in constantly search of water for hydration. You have combination skin where you're oily in your T-zone, but you're dry in your cheeks, your forehead, and other places of your face. After you nail down your skin type, the next question to ask yourself, is my skin sensitive? So how does it respond to different actives like age? AHAs, BHAs, vitamin C, and fragrance. Are there any ingredients that your skin just doesn't get along with? It's like different personalities. Like you know that there are certain personality traits that you just do not vibe with. Right. So let's start with the most basic skincare routine for hyperpigmentation. I'll write down this basic routine because we're gonna build on this and we're gonna tweak it based on your skin type and the products that you already have. In the morning, you're gonna start off with a cleanser or a hydrating toner. Now, cleansing your face in the morning is optional. If you can get away with it, then don't cleanse your face because what ends up happening is you strip your skin of all of its natural oils and it actually can create more oil. And if you wash your face the night before, then you shouldn't have a lot of dirt or grime on your face from overnight. I prefer to start my morning skincare routine with a toner pad or with a toner to help moisturize and prep my skin for the rest of my routine. Now you don't need to use a toner if you don't want one. You can just splash your face with water instead. So anyway, start your routine with either a cleanser, a toner, or a toner. Toner pad. So next you're going to use serums and treatments to target your hyperpigmentation, your other skin issues. Then you're going to lock it in with a moisturizer and then you're going to finish off and protect your skin with a tinted sunscreen. So that was your morning routine. Now time for your nighttime routine. For your nighttime routine, you're going to start off double cleansing. So you're going to cleanse with an oil cleanser to remove all the dirt and the makeup, the oil, all the grime from the day. And then you're going to follow up with a water-based cleanser. And then two to three times per week, you're going to exfoliate with an AHA. So next, you're going to apply your hyperpigmentation treatments and serums. And then you're going to lock it all in with a moisturizer. Now, if you haven't already, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Now, if I were to tweak this basic routine for my skin, I would start off by choosing what ingredients do I want to incorporate into my routine to treat my hyperpigmentation. If you watched my last video, then you know we need to find products that target all three phases of melanin production to be really effective in tackling our dark spots. So we have to find products that have a combination of all these ingredients. Let's start and say that I have dry skin and hyperpigmentation. This is how I tweak this routine. So in the morning, you're going to start off with a moisturizing and hydrating toner because I want that extra layer of hydration. So for dry skin, I recommend the Isentree How hyaluronic acid toner as well as the tear tear milk skin refreshing toner this also has niacinamide so you can check that off as another ingredient to help with your hyperpigmentation and then I also love the Dr. Sudical vegan kombucha tea essence it has these amazing hydrating and skin nourishing properties it uses kombucha from green tea to deliver really potent ingredients to help your skin barrier stay strong and healthy and it also has sunflower seed oil so it helps really soften and nourish your skin to trap like literally all the goodness inside. So this toner is actually great for all the skin types, whether you have dry, oily, and it's even really good for sensitive skin. So I really recommend this one as well. Then I'm going to look for a dark spot serum that has a combination of all the ingredients that I mentioned before. I really like the Nebuzin Vitamin C Concentrated Serum. It literally has all the things. It has ascorbyl glycoside, glutathione, niacinamide, transmanic acid, alpha arbutin, and um, ascorbic acid. So it's packed with ingredients 
ingredients to really fade your dark spots. Now, depending on how my skin feels, I might want to add another hydrating serum, a barrier protecting serum, or something that just gives my skin that like extra, you know, oomph, that glow that I'm looking for. If I also wanted to target anti-aging, those fine lines and wrinkles, I could throw in a peptide serum. So if you're looking for a product to help your skin barrier stay healthy, you want that extra glow and hydration, that I love the Barrier Bounce by Naturium. Like I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It has squalene, urea, and ceramide, so it really helps support your skin barrier. It's really lightweight, it's milky, and it makes my skin literally glow. Like it looks like a glazed donut. I'm so obsessed when I use this. Now, if you wanted something more anti-aging, you could use a peptide. So I love the Naturium Multi-Peptide Advanced Serum. It's about $25. It also has encapsulated copper peptides and argireline to help improve the texture and reduce the appearance of your fine lines and wrinkles. So another great choice. Now, if you're just looking for more hydration, your skin feels really dry, you can use a hydrating serum like this real hyaluronic blue ampule. Or I also really like this one by S Nature. It has hyaluronic acid, antolin, panthenol, and squalene. So it's great for hydration. So you wouldn't choose all of these. You would choose one depending on what your skin is feeling and what your skin craves. So the next step is you're going to lock it all in with a hydrating moisturizer. So for dry skin, you want to find a moisturizer with humectants and emollients to really pull moisture into the skin and then lock it and seal it all in. So you're going to look for ingredients like glycerin, hyaluronic acid, ceramides, and petroleum. I love this one by Astura. It has these ceramide capsules to protect your skin barrier and also has centella, seven types of hyaluronic acid, and panthenol to really hydrate your skin. If you're looking for a great moisturizer that also protects your skin barrier, like I highly recommend this one. And then finally, you're going to apply a sunscreen, preferably a tinted sunscreen, because most tinted sunscreens contain an iron oxide, which helps block the visible light that can cause hyperpigmentation. I haven't found any great tinted sunscreens, so if you have a recommendation, let me know, but I recommend this one by Ulta MD, their UV Daily Broad Spectrum Tinted Face Sunscreen. Let's clear this. Now let's chat about your nighttime routine for dry skin. You're first gonna double cleanse with an oil cleanser to remove all the grime and the oil from your face. I really love this one for Manyo because it's great for dry skin. It's a little bit heavier, very hydrating, but it won't clog your pores. And then you're gonna follow up with a gentle cleanser. So for dry skin, I recommend utilizing a creamy cleanser because they're more moisturizing, they have a thicker consistency, and they often contain emollients and moisturizing ingredients to not only clean your face, but also hydrate your face and prevent it from stripping all your oil from your skin, leaving it more drier. I really love this Round Lab Ductal Cleanser. It has triple hyaluronic acid, panthenol, antolin, and ceramides to really hydrate and soothe your skin while cleansing it. Plus, how cute is this little seal? Like, I just like love the packaging. And then two to three times a week, you're gonna exfoliate to remove all the dead skin cells from your skin, which is gonna help fade your dark spots. Now, if you're new to exfoliating, I recommend starting with a gentle exfoliant like lactic acid. It has a bigger molecule size compared to glycolic acid so it's a lot gentler on the skin. It also has hydrating, moisturizing, and brightening properties so it's a great AHA for dry skin. Recently I've been loving exfoliating serums because they are formulated with other hydrating ingredients so you don't get the irritating side effects like you do with liquid exfoliants. I like this one by BioS. Squalling 10% Lactic Acid Resurfacing Serum. It helps exfoliate your skin, but it's really gentle and it's really hydrating. Another great lactic acid serum is this one by Good Jeans. It has lactic acid, licorice, arnica, prickly pear extract, and aloe. So both of these serums are really gentle and they're really effective. So if you're new to these, start off using it two to three times per week. And then if your skin can handle it, add on another day and so on. If your skin can tolerate it, you could probably actually use this every night. Now, if you want something stronger and you only want to use something about two to three times per week, you can use glycolic acid. It has the smallest molecule side and it's great at diving in deep to exfoliate your skin, increase your collagen production, and just like help your products to work better. So this is another option. The downside is that it can be a little bit irritating, especially if you have dry skin. But if you want to try glycolic acid, I recommend starting with a lower concentration, like around five to 10%. So start off with one to two times per week. If your skin can tolerate it, then add on another day. I wouldn't exfoliate 
more than three to four times per week with glycolic acid or you'll probably end up over exfoliating and damaging your skin barrier. I really like this one by Crave Beauty. It has a lower concentration. I think it's around 5%. So it's a great entry glycolic acid and it also has lots of vitamins from spinach and kale. A really good option for you. I'm going to repeat this just in case people are confused. Choose one exfoliating product. Use a lactic acid or a glycolic acid. Do not use both. If you have really sensitive skin, go with the PHA which also have a large molecule size which means they penetrate the skin more slowly and less likely to cause irritation. You'll see PHAs being used in Korean skincare products because they're so gentle and they're really good for sensitive skin. Um, those of you that have eczema or rosacea and they offer similar benefits to AHAs but they're a lot gentler and they attract water molecules so they help hydrate your skin and they have antioxidant properties so they can help protect your skin. So I really like this green tea enzyme PHA toner by Isen Free. It's really gentle at exfoliating your skin. Now if you have dry skin you probably want to add a little you know something something to help hydrate and soothe your skin. You can apply the same toner that you used this morning. If you want to use a liquid exfoliant then I would exfoliate first and then apply your toner. But if you want to use an exfoliating serum I would actually apply my toner first and then apply my exfoliating serum. So you want to wait a few minutes to let your skin dry so you can make yourself a little matcha latte. This is a poor example because it doesn't have a lot of matcha in it. And then you want to apply your retinol your skin is dry. So Dr. Shaw, he's a dermatologist. He has his own YouTube channel with Dr. Matsfield. He recently released this dark spot serum that has literally all the ingredients to target hypermedication. Let me just like read this off to you. It has 0.1% retinol, mandelic acid, kojic acid, glutathione, licorice root, panismanic acid, niacinamide, silymarin, and acetylglucosamine. It literally has all the things. I've used this product and I'm obsessed with it. It's so effective. I noticed a difference in my dark spot after one week and that never happens. It's super gentle, it's really hydrating, so I can use this every night and it doesn't cause irritation. Now I break out around my mouth area and so I only get hyperpigmentation around this. What I do is I actually apply this to all my dark spot areas and then I'll use my other retinoid to apply to the different areas of my face, like my cheeks, my forehead. That way I get all of the anti-aging and the collagen boosting benefits from a regular retinoid while treating my dark spots. So if you have your dark spots in certain areas of your face, you can use this to treat it and then apply your retinoid everywhere else. Or, you know, if you have age spots, sunspots all over your face, you can just apply this all over. It's a great all-in-one product if you're looking for a retinoid as well as a dark spot treatment. But if you'd rather just apply your regular retinoid, then that's okay too. If you're a beginner, you're a noob to retinol, then here are a few tips. So start with a very low concentration and go slow. Use it about one to two times per week for a few weeks, make sure your skin can tolerate it, add on another day, and then use it for a few more weeks, and then so on. You might get to the point where you can use this every day, but it might take a while depending on your skin. Make sure you don't apply it to wet skin because it'll make it absorb better, meaning it'll be more potent and increases your likelihood for irritation. So if you experience irritation, you can make a retinoid sandwich, meaning you can apply a thin layer of your moisturizer, follow up with your retinol, and then apply another layer of your moisturizer. After you apply a retinoid, you can then follow up with your barrier serum or your hydrating serum like you did in the morning. So this is optional. And then you're going to apply your moisturizer to lock it all in. Now, if you need a little bit more hydration, your skin feels a little bit dry, you can either add a few drops of a face oil or you can add on another hydrating serum before you apply your moisturizer. Okay, so that was the routine for dry skin and hyperpigmentation. Now, if you have oily skin and you have acne and you wanna treat your hyperpigmentation, and this is how we tweak the routine. So if you can get away with it, don't cleanse in the morning. That way we're not stripping our face from natural oils, causing it to produce even more oil. But if you feel like you really, really, really need to, you can use a gentle cleanser. If you have clogged pores, you have whiteheads, blackheads, you can use a salicylic acid cleanser, which will help dive in deep and clear the gunk from all of your pores. Now, if you're actively breaking out, you have pimples, pustules, papules, you can leverage benzoyl peroxide. So the way that you wanna use these is you wanna get a good lather, apply it to your skin, and let them sit for five minutes. If you shower in the morning, you can apply these to your face, wash your hair, wash the rest of your body. So this allows it enough time to seep into your skin. That way you get the benefits of the ingredients without the irritation. This is a great approach if you have sensitive skin as well. So as I mentioned, cleansing is optional. I would actually recommend starting off with a toner. You want a hydrating toner, so I would recommend the Dr. Cuticle Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence. As 
as well as the Isentree Green Tea Fresh Toner. So green tea is really hydrating, it's soothing, and it helps with oil control. Another option is this Centella Toner by Mixoon. Centella is also really great at help soothing, repairing your skin, and reducing your inflammation. So we have our treatment. So if you're breaking out and you want to treat your hyperpigmentation, I would actually recommend azelaic acid. So azelaic acid is really effective at unclogging your pores, reducing inflammation, it helps prevent melanin production, and it's antibacterial. So it treats both acne and hyperpigmentation at once. This is actually really great for sensitive skin. It helps like, treat your rosacea because it improves irritation and redness and really calms your skin down. I really love this one by Peach Slices and I like this one by the Inky List. They're both 10% azelaic acid serums. Then depending on how your skin is feeling, you can add on another serum. So for example, if you want extra dark spot treatment, you can add on the vitamin C serum by Nebuzin. This one is really great for sensitive skin. If you're actively breaking out and you're looking to calm down the, your pimples, I would choose a mugwort serum because it's great at reducing inflammation, calming your skin, and it has antibacterial properties, so it'll help treat and heal your acne. You can also use Centella, which is really great at calming down redness and inflammation from your pimples and helps really calm down your breakouts. If you use the Centella toner, I would actually recommend the mugwort serum or the vitamin C serum. That way you're not using two Centella products. Then you want to lock it all in with a moisturizer. So if you want a little bit, you know, anti-aging, you can find a moisturizer with peptides. Or if you want something with a little bit more oil control, you can find a moisturizer with niacinamide, like this La Roche-Posay one. It's great if you have oily skin. I actually wouldn't recommend this one to oily skin. It's actually a little bit too hydrating and you probably wouldn't like it. It's more for dry and combination skin. I actually don't really have any tinted sunscreen recommendations. So if you have one that you really like, please comment below because I've been looking for one. I have tried this Tone Up sunscreen by Nebuzin. It's okay, it does the job. It's great at protecting your skin. The only thing I don't really like about it is it's a little bit white. So if you have darker skin, like I would not recommend this at all. If you're struggling to find a tinted sunscreen that you really like, you can just use Korean sunscreen. I really like this one by Haruharo. It's their Moisture Airfoot Daily Sunscreen. If you're looking for sunscreen recommendations, then check out my video where I do a review of my favorite Korean sunscreens. So that was it for your oily skin, acne, and hyperpigmentation routine. Now let's chat about a nighttime routine for acne prone, oily, and hyperpigmentation. You first want to start off with a double cleanser. I really love this one by Nua, the Heart Leaf or Controlling Cleansing Oil. It's super lightweight, removes all the dirt and oil from your skin, and it won't clog your pores. So then you want to follow up with your cleanser. Um, as I mentioned earlier, for your morning routine, you can use your salicylic acid cleanser. You can use benzoyl peroxide, depending if you want to focus more on targeting breakouts versus clogged pores or you can just use a gentle cleanser so I really like the matcha hemp hydrating cleanser as well as a low pH good morning gel cleanser and then I also like this doctor cleanser so you need a little bit more hydration this is a good one too so two to three times per week you're gonna exfoliate to remove dead skin cells that way you're not clogging your pores and it helps to fade those dark spots over time for acne prone skin I recommend utilizing glycolic acid or mandelic acid if your skin tolerates it well then go for glycolic acid Acid. It helps to unclog your pores, reduce your blackheads and whiteheads, and it can help reduce your inflammation and redness. Plus, it helps exfoliate your dead skin cells, helping with hyperpigmentation. It's the strongest of the acids, so as I mentioned earlier, start slow. Use it about one to two times per week. Make sure your skin can tolerate it, and then you can jump up to three to four times per week. But don't exfoliate more than that because you don't want to end up damaging your skin barrier and causing you to break out even more. Now, if you have sensitive skin, then go for a mandelic acid. It's an AHA that has a larger molecule size compared to glycolic acid. It penetrates your skin less and therefore it causes less irritation. It also has antibacterial properties so it's great for sensitive and acne prone skin. I really like this one by Dr. Wu. It's their Mandelic Intensive Renewal Serum but the one that I have been using in my routine is the one by Allies Eye Skin. It's their Mandelic Pigmentation Corrector Night Serum. It has 11% Mandelic Lactic and Salicylic Acid so it has a little color cocktail, 1% bucuchiol, 8 brighteners, and it also has antioxidants and peptides. 
when I used this, my skin looked brighter, more even. It also helped fade my dark spots. I also found this very hydrating because it's formulated with hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and other essential fatty acids. I actually use this every night, but I've been using it for a while and my skin is really good at tolerating acid. If you want to try it, I recommend starting off one to two times per week. See how your skin reacts, then increase as you build your tolerance, and then you can use it more frequently. Now, if you want to add more hydration, you want to soothe your breakouts, you can add a soothing hydration toner like you did in your morning routine. If you're using an exfoliant liquid, I would recommend exfoliating first and then your toner. But if you're using an exfoliated serum, I would actually recommend using your toner first and then your serum. So you're gonna wait a few minutes, let your skin dry, and now it's time for your retinoid. For acne prone skin, I recommend utilizing Adaptalene, also known as Differin. It's a type of retinoid that has been shown to be super effective at treating acne while speeding up your cell turnover to help treat hyperpigmentation. So you get a two for one benefit. Same rules apply like using other retinoids. Go slow, start about one to two times per week. Once your skin tolerates it, meaning no irritation or peeling, you can add on another day and then so on and then gradually build your tolerance. So after you apply your Adaptalene, you can follow up with a hydrating calming serum like you did in the morning. So you can use your mugwort serum, you can use Centella, or you can also use like this deep green tea serum, which I really love as well. And then you wanna apply your moisturizer to lock every everything in. So that's it for your oily acne and hyperpigmentation routine. So now that you have example routines that we tweaked based on all of our skin types, take a look at your current products and write down what you want your skincare routine to be. Then identify the products that you don't have and you need to purchase. Remember, these are just guidelines and you know your skin the best, so tweak these so it fits your skin's needs. This is a friendly reminder to be patient. For me, it takes a solid three to six months to get rid of my post-acne hyperpigmentation. So just keep in mind that you're playing the long game with all of these products, so take weekly pictures because your skin will slowly change and it's hard to remember where your skin came from. So drop me a comment and let me know what your skincare routines are, what products you love, and if you have any questions. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you next time.